What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Ty Boogie. Uh, I'm here once again to tell you guys some more about my uh, training experience for the military. For you all that are getting ready to join, that want to know my experience and more, all right? Now listen up, wrap your ears around me, all right? Because this is where it's go down, all right? Let's get to it. So I want to tell you guys about my experience in AIT. AIT is what you go to basically after um, after basic training. AIT stands for Advanced Individual Training. You'll basically be training for your MOS. Once you train for your MOS, you're supposed to know how to do your job. Right? Wrong, all right? Some people will leave still not knowing how to do their job. When you go to AIT, learn how to do your job, all right? You learn how to do your job. I understand you coming from basic training to AIT. AIT is where you're supposed to leave to get, you're supposed to get, you know, some more freedom. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you, uh, AIT ain't no walk in the park. You ain't about to be back on the block, all right? I put it like that. You ain't gonna be with your homies, your homegirls, and X, Y, and Z. You still gonna have to be in formation. You still gotta eat chow. You still gotta, um, still gotta sing cadence. And I, I'm under the understanding that a lot of people think that you get, you know, free days on the weekend when you just do whatever you wanna do. No, that you have a curfew, all right? You have a curfew when you are allowed to leave. Uh, so, so this is how it goes. You got a red pass. You got a yellow pass, you got a uh, blue pass. Let me break down those passes, all right? Red pass, red pass is basically a pass where you can go to the PX and basically come back. It's just, for us, it was just a PX pass, all right? That's what we call it, the PX pass. You go, you go, uh, you, you basically go shopping for detergent. You ain't getting no candy to bring back in your bay. You, you're not bringing no candy back, just forget that. Um, what else, what else? Uh, you are right, so for for after you know red pass whatever you know you get you get to get a haircut you, you go shopping and you know you basically come back to your room that's it like and so yellow pass yellow pass is basically where you get to leave the uh you get to leave you know your area or whatever you get to leave uh and go other places on base you have to be on base all right don't get it confused thinking oh I got. I got my passes, I could go wherever, yes, you can't tell me nothing. No, don't think that, all right? Don't think that, because that's, as soon as you think that way, you're going to be messed up, all right? You're going to be messed up. Remember, remember when I said this, listen up. You're going to mess up. Think you got all the freedom in the world with your little pass, all right? Anyways. So understand the limits to your pass. Then you got a blue pass. Now blue pass. Blue pass is a little, you know, a little more lenient. That's when you get to leave the base. You have to pay a cab. No. Some people can get POVs. POVs is uh, private, privately owned vehicles. Where you basically, you know, if you have uh, somebody that lives uh, around the base or whatever, you know, they come get you. You'd, you'd have to get a lot of information. You have to get a license registration. Um... You know, a lot of information or whatever that you have to give to your sergeants, basically letting them know that, you know, this is the person I'm going to be riding with and X, Y, and Z. And, um, so yeah, that's basically how that goes. And then also with the blue pass, there's limits. You can't just go anywhere. You hmm, I got blue pass. I think I'm going to go to New York. Nah, I'm going to go to Texas. You know what? I'm going to go to California. You can't do that. Your blue pass, it, it still has limits. It has limits to how far you can go. And if you just so happen to get caught going uh, outside, and I'm going to let you know right now. If you, you think you're not going to get caught going far, you think you're not going to get caught wearing your earrings uh, on your blue pass or, or uh, touching a female or a female touching a male, there's none of that stuff is allowed, even on your pass. That stuff is not allowed. Because what happens is there's going to be a sergeant. You're going to go to Wendy's thinking, oh, yeah, this is Wendy's. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm totally fine here. It's Wendy's. I don't see no sergeants. There will be undercover sergeants. Just like there's undercover cops, undercover sergeants. And they know, they know who are trainers. 
They know who, I mean, I apologize, not trainers, but trainees. They know who's training. They just know. They can tell by facial hair. They can tell by structure. We stand out, all right? We stand out. Remember that. Don't risk it. You mess around and do something that you're not supposed to do all because of impulse. You're going to be there longer or you just went through that whole process and you done got kicked out of the army before you got home. You understand what I'm saying? You done got kicked out of the army. You went through the whole basic training just to get the AIT to get kicked out of the army. You understand? It's not worth it, man. It's just not worth it. All right? So keep your hands to yourself. Stay beyond the limits. And everything will be okay. Now see me, I was student first. You'll learn with student first. And student first is basically the guy you want to be student first. It's a lot of responsibility, but it's a really good training experience. Like student first, I was PG. PG is basically the guy that's in charge of the platoon. Uh, it's called a uh, platoon guy. That's who I was. I was in charge of the, the sergeant would tell me, give me messages, and I'll tell you know the whole platoon. It'll be like it'll be like 50 people in our platoon. I used to uh, have a whole bunch of paperwork I had to do. Um, so from platoon guy, I became class leader. The class leader is basically the person, the middleman, when it comes to the, when the teacher, uh, the sergeant, that's the teacher, wants to, you know, basically tell, you know, the students to, to do something or whatever, they'll speak through me. And then from, from those two jobs, I became uh, student first. Student first, you'll learn that uh, a company has about 300 people or more or less. But it has a lot of people, and there's one person that's in charge of the whole entire company, all right? And so basically how I had to do it, you know, I got the messages from the sergeants. I got all the PGs together because at this point, I'm higher than PGs because you got, the, you got uh, squad leaders, PGs, and then you got the student first. I was student first. So basically, um, and just to let you guys know why they do that, they do that, that part of the training is basically because in the real army, you really have squad leaders where, you know, they're leading the people in their squad, in the platoon, and then you have a PG that stands, a PG is basically uh, the platoon sergeant, and then you have a, a first sergeant. Student first is another word for first sergeant. So that's basically the roles that we're playing, so we're basically learning those roles. So the first sergeant gives the message to the to the platoon sergeants, and the platoon sergeants gives the message to the squad leaders. The squad leaders give the message to the soldiers in their squad. That's just how it goes. That's one thing you want to pay attention pay attention to is the chain of commands in the army. All right, if you don't know the chain of commands of the army, you will get yourself roasted in the army. Understand the chain of commands. All right. Anyways. So, um, so, you know, that's basically what I had to do. I, I mean, I had a lot of long nights, but at the end of the day, it really paid off because it taught me a lot. Like, it taught me a lot. I was one of the fastest, you know, because I had to push myself to push others. I can't be out here giving out messages and I ain't the, uh, retrieving my own message. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't tell you run faster, run faster, if you run faster than me. I can't tell you do some more push-ups. Do some more push-ups, and my arms look more tired than yours. So I really had to push myself. So understand, the more leadership you have in the army, the better you are doing. Understand that leadership is good. That is what the army is for. You did not join the army to be some regular Joe. You joined the army to be a leader, all right? To learn how to be a team player and be a leader, all right? And that's what I learned. That's what I learned, all right? That's what I learned. Now, I want you to take all the stuff into consideration. Uh, if you haven't seen my basic training video, um, go watch it. In case you, you're nervous about basic training and you did not mean to watch this video, you meant to watch the basic training video, well, go watch my basic training video. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Do not. Don't forget to subscribe. And this is what I want you to do. After basic training, after AIT, I want you to comment under my videos. Tell me about your experience. Tell me if I helped you out, all right? Do that. Do that. Do that for me. And you all that are getting offended saying that, oh my God, why do you act the way you act? Hey man, look, enjoy life, all right? Enjoy life and I am a proud, 
American soldier, all right? Peace. Don't forget to subscribe, um, like, comment. Oh,